everybody, my name is Spammels and welcome to the video! Today we're going to be looking at some historical items of the White Star Line, most notably that of Olympic. So we're going to be doing this in story time mode to try to help the narrative transverse the episode. So without any more stalling, let's begin! Also I got suntanned yesterday, that's why I look like a lobster. Anyway, May 31st 1911, Titanic is slipping out of the arrow gantry into the River Lank and at that same moment Olympic along with Nomadic and Traffic, they're done they're ready for service, they're leaving Belfast. Now, while Nomadic and Traffic went straight for Cherbourg, France, Olympic paid a visit in Liverpool. So this right here is what's called a book post. It's, oh, Bushy! There's a big picture of it there or there, over there. It's gonna be there, I don't know, wherever. It's a book post, so it's like a picture postcard, basically. It's a real photo, but it's much bigger than a postcard. And it, what's good about this is that when you scan it, you can get a lot more detail out of it. It's super awesome. So yes, the Olympic paid a visit to Liverpool. She's only there for the day, and she was open to the public. Look at us, this brand new ship. Come on board, have a look. All the press, loads of photographs, loads of press. White Star, they are the king of the spin. You may have heard that being said before, because they are great with the press. So not only have they got Titanic launching in Belfast, boom, here's our brand new ship. And then over the next days, you have more photographs keep coming out. White Star Line is, boom, it's constantly there in the press. So there you go. If you were in Liverpool, you could have, you could have been on board Olympic before her maiden voyage. Anyway, lovely item to have. Really, really recommend it. If you can get a book post, go for it. Anyway, moving on with the story. So, Olympic continues her way to Southampton. Uh, I think she gets there, what, June 3rd, June 4th? I forget the exact date, but she begins preparations for her maiden voyage, taking on stock, taking on everything she's gonna need. This is a picture, well, this is a real photo postcard, Bush of Olympic departing Southampton. I don't think it's maiden voyage, I can't remember, but it's definitely 1911, because with every photograph, there's always a tell that kind of helps nod to its date. And with this, her lifeboats haven't got a brown top to them, they're just completely white. So that dates it's 1911. It's been a while since I focused on these and their dates. I can't remember exactly when it was. I don't want to say maiden voyage, I don't think it is maiden voyage, but um, it's definitely 1911. But I like that you got this kind of little wake breaking on the bow. I love you got a bit of smoke coming out of the chimneys. I love the, the angle of it. It's just, it's awesome. It's, it's nearly a perfect photo. Would you not agree? <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, as we said in the beginning, nomadic and traffic, they went straight to Cherbourg. But wait a second, Spamels, what the, who are these nomadic and traffic you speak of? They're tender ships built, well, with the Olympic class liners in mind, you could say specifically for them. They would service other ships as well, but they had Olympic and Titanic in mind. They were built of the same steel and to the same standards of quality, because these are going to be carrying the first, second and first class passengers out. Cherbourg, didn't, well, it wasn't deep enough to accommodate Titanic and Olympic. They were too big for Cherbourg. So, need to have tenders. So, Bushy, gonna bring this one out. Boosh, have a picture, boo 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 boosh. So this is Nomadic. Right now she's obviously heading back to the terminal. Nice little stern angle of her here, cheeky little butt shot. There's a train station in Cherbourg, France. So you'd get the boat train down to the terminal. Let, let's change cards, hang on, a boosh. Wabooshy! Boop, you get the boat train, go straight into the terminal. Inside there, you got your White Star, you got your Cunard, you got your ticket booths and blah, 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 blahs. And then you board your tender ship. So in this picture, we have Nomadic and Traffic side by side. It's an awesome shot. They are a great duo. So Traffic would handle the third class and Nomadic first and second class. And they were just that. On board, obviously it's beautifully decorated. It's only got to take them out to Titanic and back. So it hasn't got to accommodate them for a long amount of time. So there's, there's a bar on board. There's like a powder room. There's just some open spaces. It's just a nice place to hang out and wait. And they did, because Titanic was late getting to Cherbourg, kept them waiting a little bit longer than intended, but it's a beautiful ship, it's not a problem. Anyway, so here we have next, Wabushi! It's a picture of traffic departing, heading out with passengers to another ship. While she is third class, she's still a beautiful ship. I appreciate her curves. She's quite different to Nomadic. Got a pointy brow, and you got a nice curved superstructure. So yes, here she is. She's leaving Cherbourg, she's heading out to a ship. Oh, what ship could that be? Bushy! Here is a picture of Olympic in Cherbourg 
with the traffic at the bow. She's obviously loading in third class passengers at that point, there's a bow door, passengers are going in. Of course, third class on Olympic and Titanic were situated in the bow and the stern, but of course, the two were connected with Scotland Road, a big ass corridor going the whole length of the ship. And in the middle of the ship, of course, is their food, yum, yum, yum. But anyway, in the bow right there, it's a cool shot. It's not an, it's not a view you really picture very often. Fast forward, the war happens. Now in the Maddox, she escapes, but traffic, there's two stories that I know of, and I'm still not certain to this day which one to fully believe. So story number one is that, yeah, she escaped to become an auxiliary cruiser, but then she was sunk on purpose to blockade a port. But then the Nazis rose the ship and then turned the guns back against us. And then we sunk her for the final time. Her resting place is not known. That's one story. Um, I, I forget the finer points, so please, okay, highlight here, not an expert spammels. There we go. Not an expert, and I'm going off memories that I haven't thought about for quite a while, so I'm going to be missing out on finer details. But that's one of the stories. A secondary story, a former captain of traffic, with his own eyes, saw her being scrapped by the Nazis. Of course, it's the big war effort. They need all the resources they can get they scrapped the ship on the spot. So was it sunk? Was it scrapped? You decide! That's not how history works. <laughs> anyway, have a little dance, sing a little song, get down tonight. Whoa! So long after Olympic, Titanic, Britannic, many generations of ocean liner have gone many, many years later. Nomadic is still in service as of the 1960s. Wabushi, Wabushi, all the Bushis up in the air. Here's a picture of her servicing Queen Elizabeth. I think this just goes to show of the craftsmanship of Holland and Wolf, of the quality of the White Star Line. I don't think anyone envisioned this tender ship would still be in service this long after being launched into service. It's just a testimony to their quality. Still, at this point, she's a first-class tender. She's beautiful. She's, mwah. Let's get a go on that ship, please. Thank you very much. I believe Queen Elizabeth was the final ship she would tender before being retired from service. I forget the exact year, but again, it's the 60s. Anyway, moving on back to Olympic. I do hope this is interesting. I put a lot of effort into this. Anyway, so Olympic. She's beautiful, as you already knew. Uh, inside got marvelous things. So here, we have a lovely real photo photograph, postcard. It's a postcard, here's the back. It's a real photo of her D-deck, and it is gorgeous. Off the bat, you may think, it's not really an amazing angle. Why didn't they turn and look at the grand staircase? But there's still a lot of beauty to be had in this photo. You can see some of those columns from the grand staircase, so there's wonderful detailings in there. You can see the doors leading into the first class dining room with that wonderful ironwork going on. You can see a tapestry. It's a bit dark in this picture, but with some editing, we might be able to blow up the details on that and the furniture of the room, the light literally beaming through the windows on the port side. I mean, it's even got plant life in there, the carpet, the ceiling, oh, the ceilings and the light fixtures. It's just a lot of beauty. I guess it just takes someone who appreciates the ship to see the beauty in this picture. Other people might pass it up. But of course, you go through those doors into the dining room, Wabushi! So this is a, a later photo of Olympics dining room. I think it's from the 20s. I wanna say 20s, not the 30s. What makes this interesting is that they've cleared away a space in the center and now has a dance floor installed. You can now have your dinner and have a dance, have a bit of entertainment, have a good time. It's all part of how Olympic continued to evolve over the years as the, well, the demands and tastes of the world will change and evolve. Moving on to the next one, Wabushi! So here we are in the veranda calf. There's two calves. We're on the back of the ship now. We've got the palm court and the veranda calf. The palm court, I think that's where the children would be kind of locked away for the day. <laughs> There's not a children's room on board the ship. So that's kind of a place that they can collect and kind of just be happy. Uh, but on the veranda side, of course, you've got the, the revolving door at the back going straight into the first class smoking room. Alongside the door, you've got a serving window. You can get some drinks ordered there and stuff. But this is a very light and tranquil place to be. It's obviously, it's got plant life woven into the sides, big open windows. It's a wonderful, relaxing place to be. Anyway, so Olympic, wonderful ship. We've seen it pre-made and voyage, we've seen it departing Southampton. We've been inside of it. We've explored the tender ships, but the ship itself. So of course, if it ever needs to go for a service, it has to go back to Belfast. Kind of an inconvenience to get out of service for so long and sail all that way. So yeah, again, in the 1920s, uh, Southampton gets itself a floating dry dock. 
And this is an amazing thing because you can just sell your ship into it and it just lifts it clear out of the water. And Boshi, here's a picture of Olympic in the floating dry dock. And it's great because they can give it a belly rub, they can clean the propellers, they can do all any minor repairs that are needed. But at the same time, it's also a massive billboard for the White Star Line because people on the quayside looking out, this was, it's not like in the middle of nowhere. You can see this right from the prominent part of the waterfront. People walking, they can see this gorgeous, stunning ocean liner high and dry above the water taking photographs. It's brilliant. It works both ways. You can repair the ship and it's beautiful. I'm devastated they don't still do this. I guess ships have gotten way too big. Uh, who knows? Can you imagine Queen Mary 2 being lifted out of the water? That would be a sight to see. Anyway, floating dry dock Southampton. Now we are coming towards the end of this, but whilst this has been Olympic based with a touch, a smidge of nomadic and traffic, I do want to bring Titanic into this in some way or some manner because after all this is Titanic week, we are approaching Titanic's 105th anniversary. So I wanted to end this with this picture postcard here. It's of the Engineers Memorial in, oh, boosh! It's of the Engineers Memorial in Southampton. I think this is before World War One because it has this iron fence in front of it during the war. They need all the resources they can get. They melted that fence down, turned it into bullets. Anyway, the memorial still stands to this day. It is massive, it is beautiful. There was no town more worse hit than that of Southampton. So many of the crew came from and had families within Southampton. In fact, if you go to Sea City Museum in Southampton, they've got this map of the city and it's got a dot for all the crew members that were lost. And it's just, it's like, it's like a bomb went off and it's got just dots everywhere. It's crazy, but it stands testament to them who remained at their post as the water lapped around their feet. They were down in the bellows of the ship just buying as much time as they possibly could so that others could survive. So the lights would burn that little bit longer so the ship would stay as level as they could. They are so selfless in their pursuits just to be good, to save as many lives as they could. So they are heroes. They have a very fitting memorial for it. And of course, across the road from this, you have a musician's memorial. It's a lot smaller, but still they have their own memorial in Southampton. So they are also represented. So this comes to the end of this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's not a computer game. It's not game player. This is a gaming channel. Spammers, what are you doing? But we did a video like this last year at the last big event, and it was really well received. I was really happy to do this different style of video. I have a lot more still to show you. And if you are still interested, we may be doing some more of these in the future to come but for now this is it so leave me a comment down below of your thoughts and opinions and on that bombshell thank you for watching rate comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode goodbye everybody